From the bayou to the Rocky Mountains, and the depths of the Pacific to the sandbars of New England, this is Boat Trader's Stomping Grounds. From small bass boats to giant offshore titans and everything in between, boaters across America show us why they love their boat and exactly what makes it the perfect vessel for their neck of the woods. In this episode, we're driving due south, down to the sunny, world-famous Florida Keys to visit the picturesque town of Isla Morada, known across the globe as the sport fishing capital of the world. Nestled between the Everglades National Park on one side and the Great Florida Reef on the other, Isla Morada is home to legendary seagrass meadows that make up a world-class flats fishery plus miles of backcountry mangrove islands and swamps, along with an easygoing community that embraces the true island lifestyle. Hey people, it's Ryan with Boat Trader. Welcome back to another episode of Stomping Grounds. I'm here in beautiful Isla Morada, Florida at Angler House Marina right behind me, and we're about to go do some awesome backcountry fishing here in Isla Morada. We're also gonna check out the flats today. We're going out with a captain who runs a 17-foot Maverick HPX. It's a versatile flats skiff, ideal for these waters. We're also gonna have a chase boat along with us today, which is a Maverick uh, 2200. It's a 22-foot bay boat, so we can have our, our camera crew and another captain along with us. So come along with me on this adventure. I grew up here in South Florida and my uncle lived in the Keys and we'd visit him and I, I got to see what it looked like 30 years ago. Bowfish and Tarpon Trust, we are a conservation group aimed at protecting and restoring populations of bonefish permit and tarpon in the Florida Keys and throughout the Caribbean. The Keys are a really special place. We have shallow, clear water where we can snorkel, we can dive, and we have great fishing. It's the sport fishing capital of the world for the reason. In terms of bonefish permit and tarpon or any other species, more world records are caught in the Florida Keys compared to everywhere else combined. The Isla Mirada is unique because of just the, the huge variety that's available to us here. Um, I, I don't know of another place in the world where within a few miles of the marina, there are guys offshore catching sailfish, tuna, wahoo, uh, and then we can catch just within minutes from here, catch permit, tarpon, bonefish, and within a short run from there, be on snook, trout, redfish, uh, black drum, bunches of different snapper species, grouper. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a unique spot in that aspect. I, I don't know of another spot in the world like this. The, the great thing about this place is it's four islands, it's pretty much a bedroom community with some great dining and some great destination stays and the fishing, the water, and, and the water means the reef and everything else that's around it. So on any given day, you can fish either side of the island and go for species in one day that you can't do anywhere else. You have to go to another destination. Isla Morada in a phrase, it's always said it's the sport fish capital of the world. Uh, it's, I think, the waterman's capital of the world. From going out to Alligator Lighthouse and that blue, vicious, crazy, incredible blue water to the vast assortment of fish we have on both sides of the island. It can be done, again, conveniently for one boat in one day. Well, we've got kind of tough conditions today. We're supposed to have a wind out of the west, uh, and it's pretty windy out. So probably start the day out, maybe look for a permit or two. Uh, and then some bonefish on this last part of the following tide that we have this morning. <laughs> we started the day off out on the legendary seagrass meadows, chasing some of the most challenging species, permit and bonefish. There are two types of boats that are ideally suited for experiencing these areas, the flat skiff and the bay boat. Flat skiffs are built to fish in shallow waters, floating in eight to 10 inches of water, where there are few places for fish to hide. With an uncluttered deck and walk around gunnels, you can fish at every corner of the boat. This is the vessel of choice for anglers seeking tarpon, bonefish, and big permit fish. 
Maverick boasts that the 17 HPXV has more tournament wins and grand slams than any other flat skiff. She is a complete technical pulling skiff that stands as the measuring stick for the genre. Deadly quiet and precise on the pole with an open water running capability. Driving the chase boat today is Captain Nick, who's also studying the fish species and the environment around here in the Florida Keys. And he can also tell us a lot of great local stories as well. Full time dudes out here know everybody like, you can pick Eric out from afar because he's like the biggest dude on the smallest boat. You know, being like six foot six on the back of the boat. Yeah. You, you can see that guy from miles away. <laughs> yeah. How do you give directions with a place that doesn't have street signs? And then uh, every little intricacy in the flat, you know, is what, what gives it its discerning name. So yeah, right now they're pulling from the channel into the lake and going to go fish in the football field. You know, all these little little spots have their names. Every little subgroup's got a different different name for the same spot, which makes it interesting. Yeah. Find yourself talking about the same spot, come to find out, you know, it's the same exact spot, different name. Oh, we call that a football field. Exactly, yeah. exactly. This one island called Arsnicker is called that because back in the day, it was popular for the plumage trade. What happens when you like pluck a feather of the snowy egret? They fly at you and they bite you in your ass. So that's like the British version, Arse, and that's why the island's called Arsnickers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not long ago, man, there was a sailboat lodged up right in the middle of here. Really? As you know, it was a key style, anchor your boat up and, you know, no rent, so live off the boat. And one of the big storms blew them back up here, you know, right in the middle of a fantastic bone fishing flat. I'm like, all right, great, now it's a new obstacle. That's something that happens pretty frequently, you know, a sailboat gets lodged up or yeah. blown up onto it, one of the islands. Cap, where are we at right now? We are in downtown Isla Mirada. Uh, right on the edge of the uh, real famous flat, looking for uh, hopefully some bonefish and maybe a permit on this last part of the following tide today. Nice. What's the challenge with bonefish? I mean, like, I, I heard that they're really hard fighting fish, right? Oh, that's just the first step. They're the, the gray ghosts of the flats. You gotta, just to see them, you need to have really good eyes, and that's the whole the challenge of it, you know? They're swimming around, and just you see it for a second, and it, just that hunt really is uh, makes it a truly special fish to target cool and tarpon in comparison tarpon are like violent animals they are just the big big fish and what really makes the tarpon special is it's the, probably the largest fish you can catch on fly with uh with sight fishing where you see it before you catch it right uh there's no other fish that you, you can really do that of that size and that magnitude yeah and the and the only place really in the world to do it is in the heat cool yeah hermit is the third they are the most challenging fish to get to eat. They are big, they range about 15 to 20 pounds, and it's the mecca of fly fishing, or any fishing really, just because how challenging it is to do everything right. And even when you do everything right, you're still probably not gonna catch them. Yeah. So that fishery just draws so many people in here for that hunt and that thrill of going after them. Right, right. The, the three species we really focus on, the bonefish permit and tarpon, are really important because they, they are a sustainable industry. It's a catch and release fishery. And also they generate an incredible amount of money for our economies. In the Florida Keys, for instance, the, the, those three species generate just under a half billion dollars a year in economic impact. So it's a, it's a big driver for our economy. And they're also a really good indicator of our ecosystem health that we all enjoy, whether, whatever you do. If those populations are thriving, usually the water's clear and the ecosystems are looking good. On top of those three species, we also have a great fishery out back with the snook, redfish, and sea trout. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing spot. Yeah. On a good day when it's really glassed out, you can even go out and hit patch reefs and catch the big snappers and grouper. And occasionally I've even gone out and caught, you know, mahi in the skiff, and tunas in the skiff. So it's, it's a very stable boat. Uh, the boat handles, uh, it's designed to cross, you know, big, open, rough water bays. Yeah. Uh, and it does that beautifully. It's, uh, it's a very, Nice pulling boat, uh, tracks very well. Uh, it's also really quiet on the pull. You don't, you do not have a lot of hull slap. It's, it's a, it's one of the stealthier boats I've ever been in. Cool. Uh, and it floats real skinny, so it, yeah. it allows me to sneak up on these fish and get customers within shooting range. Yeah. It's a 2019 Maverick HPX. It's the the 17 foot model. Uh, beautiful boat. It uh, does a great job handling uh, rough weather. And 
you know, it'll handle chop really well. Where did you get it? I, you know, I found this boat uh, through Boat Trader. Uh, looking, I knew exactly what I was looking for and was on, just getting online every night and looking all around the southeastern United States. And uh, I found a dealer in South Carolina that uh, had this on his lot and was looking to get rid of it. So it, it worked out beautifully for me. That's awesome, that's awesome. Like many anglers before us who chased these trophies, we were unsuccessful, but the experience wasn't without excitement. We saw eagle rays, lemon sharks, and many other predators hunting on the same seagrass meadows that we were. After striking out on the seagrass meadows, we drove north up into the swamps of Everglades National Park to see if we could find some snook and sea trout. Running through the maze of seagrass banks and open bays, the shallow draft of the Maverick combined with its sharp V-bow kept us dry and comfortable. Running about 25 miles through choppy waters and around shallow banks, We arrived in a remote cove at the heart of Florida Bay's snook fishery. We were greeted by a really special experience. There was a pod of dolphins there who were hunting bait fish uh, by encircling them in a curtain of mud. So they actually do what's called mud rings, and the bait fish try to escape, the dolphin jump out of the water to snag the fleeing fish. It's a hunting behavior that is really only found in the waters of Isla Mirada. Dr. Busek and Captain Lund took this as a good sign that game fish were in the area and they started to fish. Oh, there we go. Where's yeah, that? Snook! Right. Woo! <laughs> Rock on! Casting lures and flies against mangrove shorelines, Doctor and Captain managed to catch 10 snook, over 12 keeper-sized sea trout, and even had a chance or two to catch some tarpon. Here we go. All right, so the fly was not the, not the ticket today. There we go. Ooh. There, there you go. Ah, the trout. Ooh, it was trusty, but better days. Bubby. Get, we're going the right direction, size-wise. Yeah. Ah. You there, you just caught in the tree, too. Yeah. I think he's on. I mean, I know I got a mangrove, but I thought you were messing with me.
So I think Ross mentioned to me, but before you became a guide, what, what did you do before that? So after I graduated college, I actually took a job working with Morgan Stanley and was a stockbroker for about three years. And uh, I decided that didn't get me out on the water enough. So nine to five, but not really nine to five, more nine to eight, six days a week. Sitting in front of a computer every day with a uh, telephone on my side, cold calling people nonstop. One day after a rough day, I accepted a job guiding again in Alaska and told the people I worked for what I was doing and that it was time to leave and ended up coming down here for that winter and spending a winter down here and then just splitting my time up between the two spots for years. It's a much better office than, than any office I've ever seen in a building. So, so stockbroker to fishing guide, huh? Yep. Kind of reminds me of the, the fisherman and the banker story. You know that one? Re refresh my memory on this one. Well, it's like the banker goes on vacation to a small fishing village, and you know he's just on vacation for the week, and he sees a, a local fisherman go out every day in the morning and come back every day, boat full of fish, right? Yeah. And he sees him coming back every day, so finally he goes up and he says, hey, why don't you get a bigger boat? Why don't you get two boats, three boats, have a fleet, you catch all these fish. And the guy looks at him and he's like, why would I do that? He's like, because then you could build an enterprise and you could you know, buy an office in the city and set up distribution channels. And he said, why would I want to do that? Because like, then you'd be a millionaire. And you could retire and go hang out in a fishing village and spend all day just relaxing and fishing. Doing what I do every day. That's what I already do, man. Yeah. I like it. It's that pursuit of monetary success and material wealth that many people become consumed with that really is the antithesis of what fishing and what boating is all about for so many of us. Out here, you leave all of that behind, immersing yourself in nature and the environment, feeling the pull of the tides, the warmth of the sun, the playfulness of the creatures, and the general splendor of our planet. Generally, flats fishing and backcountry fishing is limited to two anglers on board this type of boat. Maneuvering can really be tricky in these waters. It, it takes teamwork between the guiding captain and back pulling from the platform and the angler who's casting from the bow. We decided to pack it up and drive back through the maze of mangrove islands and seagrass banks. Happy to have had a really fun day on the water. We're back here at the marina now, and you know, the bay boats and the flat skiffs are a uh, little bit of rivals, right? Uh, Captain Bellinger is going to tell us a little bit more about that right now. I transitioned from flat skiffs into bay boats as a couple of different approaches. I was fishing out of a marina that somebody would come up and go, I got my family of four, and we'd love to go fishing for a day or a half day. I said, great, you need two skiffs, and the mom would, no, and they would walk 100 feet over and go book an offshore boat, what they didn't want to be on, they said, and they would be together and pay twice as much as they paid for two skiffs to go out. And it just, oh, it irked you. And I, I bought a bay boat and got in the bay boat thing. And the big difference is the skiff is going to get into water you never dream of. And with these new skiffs now, you're really stealthy. And you can get up on fish in water you can't even dream of and get shots at fish you that don't get beat up and run over and, and pursued so much. So you got the skiff is for one group of fishing and style of fishing. The bay boat uh, is that gateway into skiff fishing later. I love that when clients transition this, into the skiff for that. But uh, the bay boat is the tanker. It's mom and dad with the 25s I run now. Mom and dad, three or four kids, you can run up to six people. If you have to, you can get a family out there and get them going and, and get them coming back because they're all together and they're having a blast. You're not getting up in that skinny stuff, but those kids aren't ready to throw the skinny stuff. And, and the majority of America is not ready to throw to the stuff in the skinny stuff. You know, as you know, you're gonna be a good shot there. So we get them up, get them going, and get them coming back. This is a bay boat here. Uh, the Pathfinder, a pretty popular one. And these boats are used all throughout South Florida and in the Florida Keys. Uh, really kind of changed the game of the fishery. Despite being like a 22 or 24 foot boat, you're still 
idling in like 18 inches potentially throw the whole family on there you know four people two little kids and, and have a good time and that's what's cool about alamrata let's say you can take this boat out back and go catch a redfish a snook and some snapper and then just go under the bridge and go out and take these bay boats offshore the other day we were in a bay boat in over a thousand feet of water and i mean that's the same boat that we're taking into a foot two feet of water What I took away from filming this episode and spending time fishing the back country of Isla Morada was that this is a truly responsible, peaceful way to enjoy the water and our natural resources. These guys are particularly in tune with the wildlife and the habitats around them and how they interact with them in a symbiotic way. They're very much into conservation and preserving their way of life. Those that flock to Isla Morada to seek out their own adventures and ply the waters here come to experience what the Florida Keys is truly all about, nature. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us for this episode of Boat Traders Stopping Grounds. We're off to our next location right now. Uh, but don't forget, if you've got a cool story or a unique boat stomping grounds you want us to come check out, send us a message and maybe we'll come to your neck of the woods next. I think for the next episode we're going to head a little further south, maybe all the way down to where the road ends. You got to tune in to find out. Follow us on youtube.com slash boat trader. See you all next time. What's your stomping ground? Follow us at youtube.com slash boat trader or on Instagram and Facebook to share your boating stories for a chance to be featured. Who knows, maybe we'll come to your neighborhood next. This is Boat Trader's Stomping Grounds.